gospel section. We will get started back. We're on page two of your notes, the earthly ministry of Christ, and we're going to look at Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and uh, look at verse number 17 with me, if you will, Matthew 18, 17. Let me make sure. There we go. Matthew 18, 17. The Bible says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. All right, so we're, we're told about a church that's present during the earthly ministry of Christ. Now keep in mind that we just read scripture right before break that there was a church in the wilderness. That's before Christ was crucified. That's before the death, burial, and resurrection. It's before the the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God, and yet there was a church. And here we find in Matthew chapter 18, verse number 17, also before the death, burial, and resurrection, that there is a church. If you see there, it says, If he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. So the Lord's given some instructions here, and he's talking about um, some reconciliation and dealing with uh, somebody who's, uh, there's a fault. And the Bible says there in verse number 18, if you're neglected, then tell it to the church. All right, so there's apparently some sort of a church there in the earthly ministry of Christ. Now, the, I guess one of the most common teachings is that the New Testament church began during the earthly ministry of Christ. They say that, uh, that Christ was the pastor. Um, funny thing is they call Judas Iscariot the treasure, which is not a good thing, but... Um, so, so you see those kind of things going on, but there, there apparently was some sort of a church during the earthly ministry of Christ. And here again, we could look at these verses. We're not going to look at these right now because we've got so much we need to get through. But uh, you would say these people would be a called out assembly. Uh, these people were set free by faith and eventually. Now that's a key word, eventually blood. Remember the blood of Christ wasn't shed yet. And these people weren't even putting their faith in the finished work of Christ because some of them didn't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection uh, as of yet. And then this would be a baptized assembly. If you remember, many of these folks were baptized by John the Baptist. All right, now look with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, and look at verse number 47, if you will. Acts 2, verse 47. Christ has ascended. He's at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says in Acts 2, 47, if I can get there, it says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So the Lord's adding to the church. There must be a church in existence in order for the Lord to be adding to it. And here again, this is a called out assembly made up of saved people. So the Bible says there in verse 47, they had favor with all the people the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. So only those who are saved were added to the church. These people were redeemed by blood, saved by faith. Of course, this is the blood of Christ and faith in that blood. And this is a baptized assembly. If you look at Acts 2.38, of course, the church of Christ loves this passage. Uh, but they get it mixed up. But Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. All right, so we see that the passage here talking about their baptism. We can go on down to verse number 41. Then they that gladly received his word were what? baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. All right, so this church, it's after the ascension of Christ. Uh, they are made up of saved people. So again, it's a called out assembly. It's a people redeemed by blood, saved by faith. And it's a people that are baptized. It's a baptized assembly. Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll deal with this passage some more in uh, the Hebrews class uh, toward the end of the semester. But it needs to be mentioned here. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 22. The Bible says, But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. All right, so this is a called out assembly. They're apparently located in the heavenly Jerusalem. It is a general assembly, according to verse number 23 there, to the general assembly. Uh, it's made up of people whose names are written in heaven. And obviously from, first, or from Revelation chapter 5, verse number 9, this is a people that were redeemed by blood. And of course that is realized by faith or received by faith. And then it's a baptized assembly. Turn with me, if you will, uh, quickly to Romans chapter 6. I'm, all I'm going to do right now, I guess, is cause a problem for you. And then we'll come back and solve it several weeks down the road. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3. Romans 6, verse number 3. The Bible says here, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Now, this is not talking about water baptism. If you, uh, you got to be careful every time you see the word baptized, not to assume that it's talking about water baptism. Verse number three says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Something that you need to understand is, if we were to, we talked about the baptistry earlier in the first, uh, first part of the class tonight, if we were to fill up this baptistry with water, and somebody said, you know, I got saved, and I know I need to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And we brought that person uh, through here, and we said, okay. And I said, uh, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? And the person said, yes, I have. And I said, I baptize this, my brother, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I, and I put the person under and bring the person back up. That person was baptized into water, not into Jesus Christ. The Bible says there in verse number 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. And so this is not talking about water baptism. As a matter of fact, the, the bulk of what you're going to read in Paul's epistles when you read about baptism, it's not water baptism. Now this does not mean, please make sure you make a note of this, uh, this does not mean that the Apostle Paul was against water baptism. There's a, a group out there that I would call them hyper-dispensationalists. They believe that water baptism is not for the New Testament church. Uh, they believe that it is uh, an ordinance that would have been for the, for the Jews, but not for the New Testament church. And they, of course, like to point out that the Apostle Paul, uh, when he talked about baptism, he talked mostly about uh, spiritual baptism. We'll hopefully talk about all that stuff as time goes on. Now, on page two of your notes, the local church versus a universal church. Here's what I want you to do. I'm, you're going to have a, an assignment as we go. And I am not, uh, I am not going to, I'm, I'm going to do my best. Let me say it this way. I'm going to do my best not to lead you down a certain direction one way or the other. Okay? We're going to put you to the test. Now, the good thing is there's no passing and failing grade. But I want you to, to think on your own, okay? You're going to have to think. Uh, we've talked about the, the local church. The local church is also called the, does anybody remember? Visible the visible church, okay? The universal is also called the invisible, invisible church. Now, let's make sure we make this, this known, okay? A local church consists of only people who are local in an area where they can assemble together. A universal church can include people in heaven, but it can include all the saved. And that can mean saved in, in any area. It can mean all the saved in, in one area. Okay, If there's multiple uh, places where people meet together, but we say that's one church, that would be a universal church. Does anybody have any questions about that before we move on? Because if you don't get some sort of an understanding, I'm not expecting you to fully get it, but if you don't get part of what I just said to you, I, I want to repeat it because we're getting ready to go through, uh, however many we can get through tonight, we're going to go through around 80 of these, and I want you to have an idea of what you believe, okay? Uh, so, does everybody understand? The visible church is people that can gather together and congregate locally. Uh, that's the visible or local church. The universal church could be all the saved in an area if there's multiple places where people meet together. For example, Knoxville, if I said the church of Knoxville, is there only one group of people that meet in Knoxville to worship God? No. 
Okay, so if I say the church at Knoxville, I'm telling you I believe in a universal church, which means everybody that's here in Knoxville that's saved is part of the, the church, even though there are multiple little groups meeting. Any questions before we go, go into this? All right, here's what I want you to do. We're going to go to the, each of these passages, and we're going to read the Scripture, and I want you to write outside of it. Now listen, you're... When you come back and examine what you wrote at the end of the semester, you're, I don't want you to write this in a way to where when you're studying for your final exam that you think everything you're writing down here is accurate. This is going to be your best guess where you are right now, okay? What I would suggest is that you write either an L for local or a U for universal or a question mark. Now, I don't want you writing a question mark for every one of them. Okay, so if you see you're at number seven and every one of them you've got a question mark, then at least start, start taking a stab at it, try, try to, to guess, okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to try, I'm, I'm not, I can't make you any promises, I'm going to try my best not to lead you one way or the other. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18. The main word we're going to look for is the word church or the word churches. And we're going to try to figure out, is that use of the word church or the word churches, is it talking about a local church? Is it talking about a universal church? Or, you know, it could technically be either. And if it's technically either, I want you to write a question mark there, okay? All right, Matthew chapter 16, look with me if you will to verse number 18. Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, yes sir. Okay, so you're either to the right or the left. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing like good friends to help you out there, right? Uh, either an L for local, a U for universal, or a question mark if you think it could technically be either. So L for local, U for universal. And if you want to, so that when you're going back and reviewing these later, and Brother Gary, if you want to underline local up above, you see there Roman numeral 4, the local church. If you'll just underline local or even just the L there is fine, and then the U and universal, so that when you go back uh, four months from now and you're trying to figure out what you were doing, that'll help. And I might recommend everybody do that. So just underline the L and the U in that so when you go back, because it'll be four months. I mean, you're looking at four months' time that you'll be going back and studying this and trying to figure out what you were doing, okay? So Roman number four, the local, I would just underline the L in the word local, first one, not the second one. Okay, and then see the word universal, I would underline the U so that here again, four months from now when you're looking back over this, you, you remember why you did what. All right, so Matthew 16, 18, I'll read it to you one more time. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And do you think that's the local church, or do you think that's the universal church, or none of the above, or both of the above? So, L-U or question mark. If you're not sure, or if you could see both, you might just put a question mark. All right, go to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. And look at verse number 17, Matthew 18, 17. Let's get up a little context here just to help. Verse 15 is probably a good place to start. Moreover, if thy brother tre shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. 
But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. All right, so verse 17, is that talking about a local or a visible church, or is that talking about a universal or invisible church? All right, any questions thus far? A local church would be like Antioch Baptist Church. We meet together, we have services, we do outreach. A universal church would be all the believers in Knoxville. All right. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. Now, uh, I will tell you this, a lot of this is stuff that you, you might would normally do just in your personal Bible study. You're trying to figure out what you believe about something and you're trying to dig in and, and see what the scripture says about it. And normally we wouldn't do this in a Bible Institute class. We would just give you kind of the highlights and, and make sure and mention the doctrinal truths. But I'm trying to challenge you to think on your own. And just so you know, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, let's see, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 12, uh, 14, 15. We have 15 students in the class right now here. We have several online as well. There will be 15 different sets of answers in this room. Okay? So I'm just trying to make the point that you're not, you, you know, if you're striving for perfection here, you're, you're going to have some difficulty. All right, so Acts chapter 2, verse number 47, the Bible says this, Praising God, well, let's, let's look at verse 46. They continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread uh, from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Is that the local church? Is that a universal church? What is it? Acts 2.47. All right, Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. And look at verse number 11. Acts 5.11. Uh, look at verse number 10. Then fell she down straightway and at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. So uh, I'm trying to remember the Ananias and Sapphira, I think the, that, that's their names. And they've lied about what they're giving and so they're both dead. The Bible says in verse 11, And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. So the news of their death. Folks saw it, some folks heard about it, but the Bible says that great fear came upon all the church. All the church. What is the church? All right, Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. This will not be an interesting one for you. Acts chapter 7 and verse 38. This is one we read just a moment ago. And uh, see if you can figure this one out. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Remember the, the, the folks out in the, uh, in the wilderness on their way to Canaan. This is he was, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Is that a local or universal? Local or universal? All right, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Look at verse number 1. The Bible says, And Saul was consenting unto his, that's Stephen's, death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. There was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. So is that a local or is that universal? Don't hurt yourself, Isaiah. I appreciate your zeal, but don't, don't kill yourself over it, buddy. 
Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Let's read it again so you can regain your composure. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Now, let me say this. Some of these are going to be a bit more tricky than you might think. Okay, some of them seem real simple. And if, it, if, if all these seem real simple, you say, oh, yeah, this is easy. This is this. Oh, yeah, this is easy. This is this. Then you're not thinking deep enough. All right, so the church which was at Jerusalem, Acts chapter 8, verse number 1. Acts chapter 8, verse number 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. All right, he made havoc of the church. That's Acts 8, 3, Isaiah. We didn't get too far without you, buddy. We gave him a second to recover. Acts 8, 3, as for Saul, he made havoc. Is that you again? No. You need to get your leg checked, buddy. There's something ringing in your leg. Yeah. Acts 8, 3. Well, let me read it to you one more time. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. All right, if you will, go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 31. Acts 9, 31. The Bible says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. Now, notice this. Verse 31, Then had all the, then had the what? Churches. churches. Okay, churches. Not church. This time it's churches. And it's not possessive, it's plural. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. Now that means there are, there's more than one. Okay, in these areas there are churches. Now that could mean uh, there's two, it could mean there's three, it could mean there's 25, but there are, it's plural, churches. Acts 9.31. All right, look with me if you will to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. And verse number 22, Acts 11, verse 22. The Bible says, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Okay, so these, the, the, the Bible says there, verse 21, The hand of the Lord was with them, a great number believed, they turned to the Lord. That news travels unto the ears of the church, Singular, which was in Jerusalem. Local or universal? Local or universal? All right. Uh, look with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 11, just down a few verses, verse 26. Acts eleven twenty-six. The Bible says, And when he had found him, well, look at verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Now listen, if, if you believe the church is a building, some of these verses don't make a lick of sense, okay? How do you assemble yourself with the building? And another place we'll see in a little while, they gather the church together. How do you, I mean, you get the idea that there's a piece of wood over here and there's a piece of wood over there and we're getting all the pieces of wood together if that's what the, the church is, if it's just the building, okay? So verse 26, the Bible says there, uh, when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Is that local? Is that universal? All right. Look at Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. Acts 12, 1. The Bible says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. What kind of church is that? Is that a local church? Is that a universal church? What's, what's the Bible talking about? Down just a few verses, down to verse number 5. The Bible says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him, for Peter. 
So the church was praying for Peter. Is that a local church? Is that a universal church? All right, turn to page three of your notes. We're going to lucky number 13, Acts chapter 13. Any questions up to this point? Anybody feel like you got 100? <laughs> Everyone, I'm right. Brother Crane, you seemed confident. All right. Has anybody had any that you were confused? You thought, well, I'm not sure which way to go on that. All right. Okay. Acts chapter 13. Just so you know, when you get done with this class and you go back and you look at all those again, you're still going to have problems. So, congratulations. <laughs> Acts 13, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So there was in the church that was at Antioch. Is that local? Is that universal? Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. I am trying very hard not to insert too much. Acts 14, 23. The Bible says, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. They ordained elders in every church. So what kind of a church is that? Look at verse number 27. Here's one that's difficult if you lean toward the concept that the church is the building. Acts 14, 27, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. All right, so they gathered the church together. What is that? Is that a universal church? All the saved people? Or is that a local church? All right, Acts chapter 15. Let's move forward a little bit. Acts chapter 15. And look at verse number 3. Well, let's, let's look at verse 1 to get the context. It says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and, other, and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and the elders about this question. And being brought, brought forth, excuse me, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phanes, and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. They passed on their way, being, or excuse me, being brought on their way by the church. What kind of a church is that? All right, look at verse number 4. And when they were come, uh, come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church. And of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. So they're received of the church. Is that just a local body of believers that meet in one place, or is that something larger? Acts chapter 15 and verse number 22. Acts chapter 15 and verse number 22. Acts 15 and verse 22. The Bible says, Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church. That's an interesting way to word that. To send uh, chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. So there in verse 22 it talks about it pleased the apostles, the, the elders, with the whole church. Not part of the church. The whole church. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, look at Acts 15, verse number 41. Acts 15, verse number 41. We'll get a little further down in here, and then we may back up and ask you some questions. Acts 15, and, and look at verse number 41. Acts 15, verse 41. 
The Bible says, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. So churches, here's that again. Remember, I think it's 37 times, if I'm not mistaken, that you find churches, plural. And, and let me throw this out there. When you see the word churches, you seem to, your mind seems to run down this trail that that means there's multiple local assemblies, right? There are churches, so that means there's more than one. So if churches is the plural, and that means there's more than one, then church must always mean local. But that's not necessarily true. Okay? Look at Acts 16, Acts chapter 16 and verse number 5. Acts 16, verse 5, the Bible says, And so were the churches, there it is again, plural, established in the faith and increased in number daily. The churches, okay, they're growing, they're established, they're increasing in number. So is that talking about more than one local assembly? I mean, it'd be, you'd struggle there to think that's talking about uh, something else, but what are your thoughts? All right, that's Acts 16, verse number 5. Look at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. And look with me, if you will, to verse number 5. No, excuse me, verse 22. Acts 18, 22. Acts 18, 22, the Bible says here, And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. So he saluted the church. He's, he landed at Caesarea. He's saluting the church. And then he goes down to Antioch. That's what verse 22 says. All right. Acts chapter 18 is what that was. Look at Acts 19. Acts chapter 19. And look at verse 37. I might have you put a little asterisk beside this one because this is perhaps a unique use of the word. And so I want you to just put a little note there. Uh, make sure you know this one kind of stands out from the other uses. Acts chapter 19. Let's, uh, let's get a little context here for this one. Look at verse number... Let's look at verse number 30. The Bible says, When Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, and the Jews, or the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So for two hours, they just keep screaming that same phrase. I mean, they're just almost in a trance, it seems like. Verse 35, the Bible says, And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus... What man is there that knoweth not how the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? So these people are worshiping false gods. Okay, so they're consumed with this false religion and false worship. And they've got goddesses and gods and, and all these things. And they're mad at the, the Jews who have, or they're mad at these uh, folks who have brought the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ because it's going to hurt their worship of Diana. Verse 36 says, Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these, uh, these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. So just so you know that technically the churches there could be false churches. It could be God's churches. These people are consumed with this pagan worship and they're saying these people that you brought out, they haven't robbed any of your churches. Now what kind of churches are they talking about? Now, of course, our study, we're trying to figure out, is it local, is it, is it universal, something like that. We're just trying to figure out the use of the word uh, church. But do keep in mind, this could be pagan churches. Okay, this could be uh, something a little bit different. Look with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And verse number 17, Acts 20, verse 17. 
Yeah, the Bible says, and from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Is that just one local body of believers or is it something bigger? Okay. That's Acts chapter 20, verse 17. Look at Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. And we, we will not always be this technical, but I'm trying to get you to think and challenge your own understanding here a little bit tonight. And we'll start off this way next week, get a few more, and then we'll move into more, uh, you know, typical uh, teaching. Acts chapter 20, look at verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. The Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now that's an important one. What church did Christ purchase? Is it a local church or is it something larger? Okay, that's Acts chapter 20 and verse number 28. Turn with me, if you will, over to Romans. We'll go to Romans chapter number 16. Romans chapter 16. We'll have several in this chapter. Romans chapter 16, verse number 1. The Bible says this, I command unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Centria. All right, so it's a church which is at Centria. Local church? Maybe. Universal? What are your thoughts? Romans chapter 16, look at verse number 4. Romans 16, 4. Uh, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Now, hopefully every once in a while you're getting one that you say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty confident I, you know, I understand this one. All right, hopefully that's the case. Uh, Romans 16, verse number 5. Romans 16, 5. The Bible says, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Romans 16 and verse number 16. Romans 16, 16. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. The churches of Christ salute you. And then look at Romans chapter 16 and verse number 23. Romans 16 and verse number 23. Gaius mine host and of the whole church saluteth you. Erastus the chamberlain of the city saluteth you. All right, so Gaius mine host and so he's my host and the host of the whole church. So what is that? All right, let's see if we can. i tell you what let's do. Let's. We're going to stop on those right now, and I want to go back and, and get some, some feedback from you, okay? <laughs> so we stopped at Romans 16, 23, and uh, we will pick up at 1 Corinthians next time. We've got a, just a few minutes left. I want, to, um, I want to pick your brain. So here's what I want you to do, okay? Are you all nervous? Don't be. All right. We'll just do it this way. If you put, if you put local on any of these, I just want you to raise your hand, okay? No, well, no, no, no. Hold on. I mean, <laughs> I mean when we get to it. You're like, oh. yeah, we do. yeah, I put it on a few. When I, when I go to the, to the passage, when I mention the passage, I, if you put local, I just want you to raise your hand. If you put universal, just leave it down. That way we'll kind of know, okay? If you put a question mark, just leave your hand down. Some of you are never going to raise your hand, and I know that. All right, so Matthew 16, 18. Any locals? None. Matthew 18, 17. Any locals? All right, so we got some there. Acts 2, 47. Any locals? All right. How many? 
locals run that, Acts 247? Three. See, y'all can all split now. We can have like big church splits over this stuff. Acts 511, local. All right. Acts 738. Okay. Acts 7. Th- now look, Acts 7:38 was one of the easier concepts, right? Everybody see that? Okay. <laughs> Y'all got to understand when everybody's nervous, I'm I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> so there's not a brighter day in my life than when everybody around me is scared to death. So you're encouraging me. Acts 8.1, locals. Any locals? Okay. All right, a few. Acts 8.3. Okay. Uh, Acts 9.31. Okay. Acts 11.22. All right. Acts 11.26. Acts 12.1. All right. Acts twelve five. Acts thirteen one. Okay. Acts fourteen twenty three. Fourteen twenty seven. Fifteen three. Interesting. Fifteen four. Okay, 1522, 1541, 16-5, okay, 18-22, 19-37, okay, 20-17, 2028, 16-1, 16-4, 16-5, okay, 16-16, and 16-23. All right, now how many of you are 100% sure of your answers? Is there anybody in here that would admit it that did not put universal on a single one? You did not put universal on a single one. Anybody? Okay. Now, by not putting universal on a single one of these, you have divided yourself from a good number of Bible-believing independent Baptists who suggest that there is no such thing as a universal church. And yet, based on your testimonies, every one of you put down you on some of these references to say that you believe some of these passages are talking about something bigger than a local church. So you just need to know that that is a very divisive, very divisive subject matter and that you have divided yourself out to suggest that there is more than a local church. Okay? Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to say you, are, you have put yourself on an island now by your answers. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and stop for tonight. Next week we will pick up at 1 Corinthians 1 and we will go through the rest of the New Testament. So uh, we'll take uh, about a 15 minute break, okay? So if you need to go downstairs, get you something to drink, something to eat, go ahead and do that if there's any food left. My understanding is after the first break it's slim pickings most of the time. All right, thank you folks. The Lord bless you.